So it's a very fun session. So, and she's the first speaker. So let's give her a really warm welcome. Okay? Yes. Okay. Hi, welcome. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking about creating art with a Raspberry Pi. It's my first hardware project. So um, when I started this project, it was about six months ago. And um, at that time, I had just left my first dev job. And I was actually really depressed. And I didn't have any confidence in myself as a developer or really as a person. And I was becoming really reclusive. And I didn't really like who I was becoming at the time. So I kind of forced myself to leave my apartment and go out and do something one night. And I ended up going to an art museum. In particular, I went to the Stedelijk Art Museum in Amsterdam, where I live. And I went to see this exhibit by Jean Tingley. He's a Swiss artist um, from the 60s and 70s. And for him, art was not about standing in a sterile white space and gazing um, distantly, um, distantly at a silent painting. He made machines like this, that this machine actually created its own art. Um, he thought art should be playful, and then he was interested in making art interactive with the viewer, and then thus blurring the line between the artist and the viewer. And when I was at the exhibit, I saw this quote, and it really stood out to me. I really liked the idea of creating a temporary experience um, with art that would connect the artist and the viewer. And it would be spontaneous, and it's only meant to bring joy for like a really short amount of time, and then it would be gone. So that quote and the entire exhibit really inspired me. And at the time, um, it was like a ray of light in a really dark place since I was so depressed. And it gave me hope, and it gave me inspiration, and it kind of gave me a goal to look forward to. And it made me dream and think that maybe I could come up with a project like that, and um, I dreamed big. I dreamed of creating like, this is one of his um, art installations. Um, I dreamed of making like, transforming one of the walls of my small Amsterdam apartment into a huge art installation with moving parts and sounds that could go off and lights, and it would all be controlled by a web app that an outside um, person could trigger the stuff in my apartment and it would just make spontaneous things happen in my apartment. So even though I had these really, really big dreams, um, what I ended up building was quite a bit different than that. So on the left is a React Native app that I built. It's just a single page app with a, it has a color picker up top. Um, people can click on colors and um, then the squares below represent each of 64 LEDs on a Raspberry Pi, and they can click out a design, and when they click Submit, um, it would show up on my Raspberry Pi in my apartment. Um, and it did end up a lot different than what I envisioned, but that's actually 100% okay. Um, that happens. Um, what was actually most important was that I just fi finished that first hardware project, and I gained a lot of confidence in myself and skills by doing the project, and it's allowed me to um, keep a lot of enthusiasm and keep going and doing more hardware projects. So when I started building, tackling this project, I broke it into two phases. Um, planning, which was actually the biggest chunk of the project, and then the actual building. So for the planning, um, so I had my big idea, but then um, what I really needed to do for my next step was I thought I really needed to think about what skills did you actually need to build something with hardware and do like an art installation project. So I started thinking, and the first thing was I needed coding skills if I was gonna build a web app. Um, I probably needed artistic ability. Uh, experience with hardware would probably be helpful. And then expertise in wiring and soldering and just being comfortable with electronics in general. So after I came up with these uh, skills that I thought were necessary, I assessed myself against those skills. Um, it was a big reality check. So I felt, um, since I had um, worked as a coder, my first job was, um, I was a Ruby on Rails developer for like almost two years, so I felt like I could probably handle the coding. But I don't have any real artistic skills. I've never worked with hardware. 
And the thing that caused me the most anxiety and felt like the biggest obstacle was I had no experience with wiring and soldering. This gave me so much anxiety to think about. And I really didn't know if I could even, could you even do anything with hardware without this? This seems pretty important. Um, so I started researching. And I needed to find out if there was like a plug and play off the shelf option for building stu cool stuff with hardware where you don't actually have to know how to wire or solder. And I was super, super excited to find that there's these things for Raspberry Pi called HATS. It stands for hardware attached on top. They just plug right into the pins on top of your Raspberry Pi. They're all different kinds of hats from like doing music and lights and um, sensors. There's, there's a whole variety of things you can do. And they don't require any wiring and soldering. And that really boosted my confidence that I could keep moving forward and maybe actually build something. Another great thing about hats is they come with established um, code libraries. They're usually in Python because that's what a lot of the Raspberry Pi stuff is in. And these code libraries have tons of documentation and examples so you can get up and running and then build off of those um, code examples to kind of build what you wanted to build. So I chose uh, a hat called the unicorn hat. And not just because of the name, um, uh, it's just a 64, uh, square of LED lights, um, just eight by eight square grid. And I picked it because when I saw it, I saw pixel art. And I kind of always really liked the aesthetic of pixel art and it just looked like a nice square canvas with all these little squares that um, my friends could probably make some cool designs for me to see. So after I identified my hardware, I started thinking about well, what, would, what would the app look like? What, how would the user actually create art designs for this piece of hardware. So I created a mock-up. And in my mock-up, it was just a single, I just envisioned a single uh, page application with a color picker up top, and a uh, user could click on the color picker, and then it would just be the, an eight by eight square just representing each of those LEDs, and they could click on squares with different colors and um, put out their design. And then when they would submit it, it would be sent immediately to the Raspberry Pi in my apartment, and I would get to see it. Um, so after the mock-up, I had a much clearer image of like how I thought the project was kind of coming together in my head, and I was feeling a little bit more self-confident, and um, the next step for me was to decide what things were absolute must-haves that I wouldn't compromise that had to be included in the project, and then I would be able to make decisions on what the tech I would use to build it would be. So for me, there were three things that were really important to include. First of all, it had to be um, accessible to anyone in the world. So my friends in Amsterdam and my friends in the US could all send me random pieces of art. Um, next, it had to be colorful. You had to be able to do multiple colors in the design. And the third most important part was I wanted to build it in JavaScript and React, um, not only to improve my skills because, like I said, I, I, just, I was newly unemployed and I knew that I was going to be looking for a job. So, and I was thinking of moving into doing um, JavaScript and more front-end development. Um, so I not only wanted to improve those skills, but I also thought it might be like a nice um, offbeat project that would maybe stand out when I was looking for a new job and maybe set me apart from others. So at this point, I was getting really, really excited because I was so close to actually starting to build. But my last step was I needed to assemble my toolkit. I needed to bring together you know, my big idea, my must-haves, and figure out what tech was actually gonna get me to that final product. So for me, I saw there was three main parts to the app. The first part would be where the user created art. This would be you know, this, the mock-up that I did. And like I said, I was gonna use um, JavaScript and React and React Native to, to build that. The second part would be actually displaying the art, and that would be with the Raspberry Pi, the unicorn hat, and that code library that came with the hat in Python. I was a little anxious about working with Python because, like I said, I was a Ruby on Rails developer. I had never actually coded in Python, but I thought with like the, the code library and the examples that I could probably wing it and um, figure out enough to actually get something to show up. So the final piece, is actually the most important part of the app because it makes the app all work, was how was I going to get that user art to show up on the Raspberry Pi? And for me, 
I had no idea how I was going to do this. I didn't know what tools that were out there for me. And it was pretty frustrating and discouraging to have already done so much research and still not know how my app was going to actually work. But this is actually really normal, like in personal projects and like professionally. Like a lot of times you have an idea and you don't know what tool, you're not, you don't know how you're going to solve it and you don't know what your tools you're going to use. But that's okay. You kind of have to be okay with that. So I started researching again and I, I looked up other unicorn hat projects. I looked at GitHub repos. I looked at blog posts. I was trying to see if anyone was solving kind of the same problem as me, but they weren't. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I started looking, were there any Raspberry Pi projects made with React? Um, there wasn't a lot of information out there, but through a lot of internet sleuthing, um, I did find that there, I found a little lightning talk where someone was demoing just like a proof of concept that they used uh, React Native to be able to click a button and have one LED attached to like a breadboard light up. And um, they used a library called Socket.io, which I had never heard of, but it sounded like it was kind of solving my problem. So I decided to research it more. And I found out that Socket.io is pretty freaking awesome. And it works really well for like hardware projects um, like mine because it enables bi-directional communication between applications. Um, it works on every platform browser or device and it's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, you just, in each of your applications, you just include a Socket.io client library and then you just need a Socket.io node um, server in between to allow them to relay messages between each other. And they did have client libraries for Python and React with, with the two main languages that we're using. So I was so excited <laughs> because I had this missing link in my toolkit now. And with Socket.io in my toolkit, I finally had all the three parts of my application figured out. And this is what the project looked like. So I had um, the React Native and a React um, app where users could create their art. And I included the Socket.io client libraries in that. And then um, Raspberry Pi, I included the Socket.io client library that was written in Python. And then in between, I had a Socket.io server just deployed on Heroku um, because it's free. And um, that would allow the communication between those two and allow the art to show up. So I was super excited. I was finally to the fun part. I was finally going to start building. <laughs> and even with all that planning, I was still super intim intimidated to start because I just ended up thinking about the big goal, what I needed to get done at the end, and that really overwhelmed me. But um, I, what I found that helped me is I broke up the task into smaller manageable tasks, and that just kept me having like these little um, victories along the way and kept me kind of distracted from thinking about like the final goal. So for this project, I broke it into three milestones. Um, the first one was I just wanted to get one LED um, on the Raspberry Pi to show up. After I got that, I wanted to get a bunch of LEDs um, to light up, but just in one color. Don't worry about multiple colors. And then finally, the final, um, my final goal was to get a bunch of different LEDs to turn on in, all, in any color the user wanted to use. So even that first goal of lighting one LED, I broke it into even more goals. Um, first thing I did, I just created a big button um, in my UI. And when I clicked it, I wanted to see on the Raspberry Pi that it was sending a message, that the communication was actually working. Then once I achieved that, I kept the button. But when I clicked it now, I wanted to see just one set LED show up. And then once I did that, I created that grid of the, all the LEDs, and I wanted to see when I clicked on any of those squares that just that one LED would show up. And by doing that, it made things really doable. I stayed motivated because I kept having these little victories. I kept myself distracted from thinking about the, the end goal, and these small victories just made me feel awesome. I felt productive, and I didn't get overwhelmed. And I could keep moving. Um, through my project. So now, I would really like for you to try out my app. Um, I have my Raspberry Pi here, 
And if you visit light-art.herokuapp.com, um, there, hopefully art will show up. And I have a bonus for you. Um, I made a wearable. I built onto the project and I made a wearable. Is anything showing up? Yes. Oh, it is? It was. Oh, shoot. That's okay. Is it showing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the shirt is uh, it's pulling the main colors that are being sent here, and um, I built this with an Adreno. Um, and I gained those skills that were super intimidating, wiring, soldering. From building this project, I can move on to building something like this where I actually had to learn how to wire and solder. And it's all because I gained so much confidence in that one, um, building that first app. So while you keep, please keep sending art and hopefully this keeps working. <laughs> um, I just want to leave you with some final thoughts. So before this project, um, I hadn't done a lot of things like this before. I had never written anything for hardware. I had never written any Python or React Native. I had never built anything using Socket.io. I had never even built a server with JavaScript. And I had never combined so many different languages and frameworks and tools into one project. But despite all of that, I still managed to finish my first hardware project. It gave me a lot of confidence to keep building more. It's kind of like my interest now. And hopefully you'll be happy to know that I did end up landing a job as a JavaScript developer. <laughs> oh. And that was in part because I had this like kind of offbeat, quirky project um, that kind of helped um, get people's attention. Um, so don't ever let uh, what you think are your insufficiencies holds you back from tackling the stuff you really want to build, you can do this. Thank you. Now create, go create something wonderful yourself. Let's give her another round of applause. <laughs>